In honor of Veterans Day, we are highlighting Louisiana's military history, Louisiana military bases, and Louisiana servicemen and servicewomen who have played a critical role in the United States military in times of war and peace. Welcome, y'all, to the Red Onion Podcast. Today, we'll be talking about Louisiana's place in military history. We'll also be talking about some festivals. Also, the Louisiana Artist Spotlight this week is saxophonist Plaz Johnson. Today's sauce is Northern Louisiana cuisine. You can also visit us on our website at redonionent.com, or you can get us on Facebook at Red Onion. Or you can get us on Twitter at Red Onion E N T T E R One. All right, so now we're going to go to uh, Trump's visit to uh, the LSU football game in Tuscaloosa this past weekend. Uh, I feel like this is a little bit of with history with the military, well, with the with the president uh, visiting LSU, which is the first time a sitting president um, ever attended an LSU game. Uh, also, on May 18th, 1990, former President Ronald Reagan delivered a keynote speech at LSU's commitments uh, in Tiger Stadium. Uh, in 1994, George H. Bush came to celebrate the grand opening of the Lodge Cook uh, Alumni Center. Former presidents Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford were also in attendance. Later, uh, George Bush um, dedicated the LSU War Memorial in 1998 and returned in 2001 to dedicate the Lyde Cook Creole Cook Conference Center. Um, also, uh, George H. Bush, uh, he died in 2018. Uh, Bud Johnson, which is an alumni uh, uh, association, recounted the former president's deeper connection to Tiger uh, Nation. He can uh, he contact uh, his contact with uh, LSU folks dates back to World War II, when he met a couple of former Tiger football players in the South Pacific. Um, Bush was flying a torpedo bomber um, for the Navy, and in September second of nineteen forty four, when his plane was shot down, he bailed out, deploying his parachute and an inflammable and, it's, and he was an inflammable raft. Bush floated for hours before he was rescued by the USS Finback. A submarine sent to pick him up, um, and the sailors. When he got out, of, uh, got to the to the submarine. Uh, a couple of sailors uh, met him there, and uh, they rescued him. Um, Bill Edwards, a former LSU football lineman, was one of those guys. So he has. We have a little deep connection with uh, with when it comes to the presidents and LSU. Um, also, uh, I'll tell you a little bit of how, how LSU got the uh, Tigers' name, which is also uh, kind of a military. In the fall of 1896 football season, the LSU first adopted the Tigers' nickname. Uh, Tigers' nickname has a long history of Louisiana military history. In the Mexican-American War, four different volunteer units used that nickname, the Tigers. Um, one of those volunteer units was the Washington Artillery. It was a unit that uh, traces its history back to 1838 and has a logo that features the, the Tigers' head. Um the tiger symbol was used uh, by LSU and came to the Washington military as a logo. So that's kind of how LSU got the uh, got the it was a military uh, a military uh, unit that that kind of helped LSU get their uh, their nickname. So pretty fascinating stuff right there. Right. Next on the list, uh, we have Louisiana festivals. Uh, the only festival this weekend is uh, the Louisiana Renaissance Festival held in uh, Hammond, Louisiana. Um, they have many things at this uh, at this festival. It's a theme park. It's got theaters. They got shopping. Um, they got educational stuff. Um, they got entertainers. Lots of things to do in Hammond, Louisiana this weekend. Uh, the Louisiana Renaissance Festival. Uh, Hammond is located about an hour east of uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Interstate 12.
All right. Now we got our artist spotlight, um, which I think is pretty uh, fascinating uh, spotlight this week. We have Mr. Plaz John Johnson Jr. He was born July 21st, 1931 in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, which is from my home parish. He's a soul, jazz and hard bop tenor saxophonist, uh, probably best known for uh, the tenor saxophone solace on uh, Henry Mancini's uh, Pink Panther theme. He also performs on uh, the alto and the baritone sax, as well as uh, various flutes and uh, clarinets. A um, little history about him um, when he was in uh, Donaldsonville. Um, he sang uh, with his family group until the saxophonist's father bought him a soprano sax. Uh, largely self-taught. Um, um, he and his piano's brother, uh, Ray, first recorded as the Johnson's brothers in New Orleans in the late 40s. Um, Plaz first toured with R&B Char- R&B singer Charles Brown in 1951. He's a, Charles Brown's is the guy that did uh, "Please Home Come Home for Christmas." He was from uh, the Texas area. Um, after the service, after the army, after he got out of the army, he and his brother moved to LA in '54 and uh, soon began sessions, uh, recordings, full time musician and backing artists such as BB King and Johnny Otis. Um, Recruited by Johnny Otis and executive Dave Cavanaugh for Capitol Records in the mid-50s, um, Johnson um, played on records with Pegger Lee, Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra, and uh, also the famed uh, um, studio band The Wrecking Crew. Um, he remained a leading session player for most, mostly 20 years, uh, arranging Two, uh, basically doing two sessions a day, sometimes three, and playing everything from movie soundtracks to Lee Baxter's uh, exotic albums, which is a, um, a tropical musical theme, um, to rock and roll singles uh, by Ricky uh, Nelson, Bobby V, um, R&B records uh, by such performers as Larry Williams from New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, Bobby Day. He played on many of the Beach Boy records also. He remained a, uh, a leading uh, session player for almost 20 years, arranging two sessions a day. And uh, like I said, he uh, he 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 stayed very busy. He also uh, joined uh, he joined the studio band for Merv Griffin Show in 1970. Um, he now lives in uh, in, in uh, Louisiana, uh, excuse me, L.A. Um, currently, he's 88 years old, and uh, he's from he's he's a guy from uh, Louisiana, Southeast Louisiana, Donaldsonville, Louisiana, Ascension Parish. Um, very fascinating guy. Um, if you go on YouTube, you can probably find him, and they got an interview with him, which. It's pretty cool, and uh, you can. Uh, and who don't know about the Pink Panther theme? Um, I don't. I don't know if anybody don't know, that don't know that saxophone um, uh, ride. So, uh, pretty fascinating. And Plas Johnson from Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Please don't forget to visit our website at www.redonionent.com. Or get us on Facebook at Red Onion Entertainment. And you can catch us on Twitter at Red Onion E N T T E R 1. Yeah, I thought it would be real cool this week uh, since we're celebrating uh, Veterans Day that we would talk about a little bit of history and the Louisiana military history um, um, as it uh, goes with wars. So um, our first uh, war we're going to talk about is the War of 1812. The Battle uh, of New Orleans was the final major battle of the uh, War of 1812. It was fought between the British uh, Empire and the newly formed uh, United States. Um, the battle, which took place on January 8th, 1815, featured the uh, British aggressors intended uh, to capture uh, New Orleans. Um, the battle itself was fought on the grounds of the Chalmet Plantation, roughly about five miles southeast of uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, in uh, Chalmet, basically where Chalmet is now. The par- They call it the parish down there. Um, also, uh, the Battle of New Orleans is referred to by many as historians as the greatest American land victory of the war, um, led by the present future president of uh, Andrew Jackson, defeated the much larger British force, which was bolstered by U.S. troops' hopes for a speedy end to the war. 
So that's the War of 1812. The next war we're going to go, and uh, that's has a Louisiana flavor a little bit, um, the Civil War. The Civil War was between 1861 and 1865, and uh, very, uh, very uh, tremendous. To bad years uh, for Louisiana in the span of the, those those five years, in the wake of uh, Abraham's election in November 1860, um, Louisiana prepared for for the first succession. The Republic of uh, Louisiana was a, a dominant population center uh, for Confederate uh, states of America. Um, Louisiana declared that it uh, succeeded from the Union on January 26, um, 1861. Uh, with New Orleans being the uh, largest city in the South, was strategically important, uh, a port city due to the uh, southernmost uh, location of the Mississippi River and its uh, access to the Gulf of Mexico, which is um, also today. You know, the, 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 the Mississippi River is very important to the, uh, to the world or to the United States and uh, Louisiana. On March 21st, 1861, Louisiana joins the Confederate States of America. Um, over 25 battles, uh, notable kind of you know battles in Louisiana that happened. Uh, the notable battles is the capture of New Orleans. Um, Baton Rouge had a big battle. Um, you got Mansfield and Port Hudson was uh, also um, pretty big. They had a little skirmish in Calcasieu Pass, which is uh, over there by Lake Charles. That was the most western uh, part, but uh, nothing big. It was uh, like in, it says Cal Cal Calcasieu Pass, but it's mostly in Cameron, just south of Calcasieu Parish. Um, so uh, pretty fascinating. They got all the way back to that to that little part of the uh, of, of the uh, United States, which you know you, you uh, uh, that was a very important area, also uh, almost in Texas. Um, our next um, war that we're going to talk about is the World War World War Two. Um, World War Two was from 1940 uh, to like 45. Um, Camp Beauregard in Rapids Parish was a site, a large scale training facility in World War uh, One. It was also converted in uh, tr for training camp and for the by the Louisiana National Guard. Um, construction of the camps in Livingston and uh, Claiborne in Rapids Parish and Camp Polk in Vernon Parish rapidly followed. So, um, lots of uh, training facilities in Louisiana um, for World War II. Um, construction of uh, Fort Polk began in forty one. Thousands of uh, wooden barracks sprang up quickly and the support of the army uh, preparing for the battle of uh, North Africa, European and the Pacific fronts. Um, soldiers at Fort Polk um, participated in Louisiana maneuvers, which uh, designed to test the U.S. troops preparing for World War II. Um, also, New Orleans played a critical role um, in this war, uh, World War II. Local um, shipbuilder Andrew Higgins invented a boat designed to float in the shallow waters of Louisiana swamps and the marshes. He realized that the boat um, could protect, um, uh, be perfect for getting uh, soldiers and vehicles equipment off the big ships um, off the shore in Europe during the war. Um, so uh, local shipyards, Higgins Boats, um, that's the name of his company, was used throughout the war, mostly Nolaby on the normally, norm normally be beaches during D-Day invasion. So New Orleans and Louisiana had a big, a big, uh, a big, a, a big part of, of this D-Day. Um, they were successful storming uh, this place. And then Dwight Eisenhower uh, would describe Higgins as the man who won the war for us. All right. So we'll go to the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War, uh, eight, 1962, Fort Polk began converting to an advanced inf infantry uh, training facility. Um, a small portion of Fort Polk is filled with dense jungle-like vegetation. So this, along with Louisiana's heat, humidity, and uh, all the rain that we have, uh, this this infantry, the, the infantry soldiers uh, in preparation for combat in Vietnam. So this training facility uh, became as uh, Tigerland. They called it Tigerland for the next 12 years. Most More soldiers were shipped to Vietnam from Fort Polk than from any other training facility. So pretty fascinating that the Vietnam War, also Louisiana had a big part in that uh, in Fort Polk. Uh, we got Fort Polk, you know, and then we got Barksdale Air Force Base uh, up in uh, Bossier City, which played crucial parts in uh, any war that we do. They In the Afghan Af uh, Afghan War with Iraq, uh, with, in Iraq wars. Um, so um, Barksdale um, was established in 1932, um, named for the World War One aviator and test pilot Lieutenant Eugene Hoy Barksdale. 
And um, Fort Polk was named in honor of the uh, right revered Le Le Leonis Polk, the first uh, Episcopal bishop of the Diocese of Louisiana and a distinguished Confederate general in the American Civil War. So uh, those two bases are very important to, to, the, to the United States also uh, and for the economy in Louisiana. Um, immediately following the terrorist attacks on uh, September 1, 2001, Barksdale uh, provided a safe haven for President Bush. If y'all remember that he uh, he uh, had to leave, I think he was in Florida and he ended up in Barksdale and I think he ended up somewhere else, uh, a little bit more west. Then he went back to the uh, to the Capitol that night. But he uh, he stopped in Barksdale and uh, I think he, uh, he he did his first speech on 9-11 um, from the uh, from Barksdale. Um, so. That played a big part in one of our uh, worst things that we ever happened. So coming up next, we're going to talk about the uh, the sauce. So we'll be right back. Okay, today's sauce will be northern Louisiana cuisine. Um, when outsiders think of uh, the Louisiana foodways, um, Cajun and Creole classics like gumbo and po' boys, etouffee, jambalaya, all uh, leap to mind. Um Often passed over or uh, equally significant to the traditions of uh, Louisiana uh, is this northern Louisiana cuisine. And we'll talk about a couple of uh, height items that are, that are from that area. Um, the first one is going to be uh, who, who's had a Natchez meat pie. I don't know anybody that had, had one of those. You talk about great. Um, they were introdu introduced in Louisiana in the uh, 1700s by Native Americans and later um, improved or spiced up um, by the Spanish. Um, he uh, it has evolved over the last 300 years um, uh, in a in, in a crust ground beef, ground beef, ground pork, and green onions and garlic pepper, uh, bell pepper, garlic and bell pepper, and onion and salt and red pepper um, to give it that kick. Um, we all like that. Um, Nac Natchitoches uh, is, is officially the meat pie capital of Louisiana. Um, the Natchitoches Meat Pie Festival was formed in 2002 to celebrate uh, this notable culinary staple. It's held the third week in September every year. You really need to go down there. Uh, Natchitoches is a really nice town. Um, it's the first town of uh, Louisiana, and uh, and it also has Cane River there, which has a lot to do with the Creoles. Um, and we'll talk about that at some point. We'll have a, a segment on Cane River. Um, also, uh, a hot uh, dish up there is hot water cornbread. Um, hot water cornbread uh, is a Native American food also. It's unique to the uh, South. Uh, European explorers learned to make uh, cornmeal into cornbread from the uh, indigenous people. Um, another, A couple other uh, staples uh, down there in uh, up there in North Louisiana is uh, sweet potato pies, the fried catfish. You got greens, um, purple hull peas, which oh man, you talk about with rice, you talk about good. Also, they got um, um, plum jelly. Um, so as you can see, uh, Native Americans um, had a big part in uh, in this North Louisiana, also, and then you got the Spanish that came in and all that. So uh, that's that's a little bit about the sauce Northern Louisiana cuisine. Okay, that's going to do it for this week's Red Onion Podcast. Uh, please uh, visit us on uh, our website at redonionent.com. You can also get us on Facebook at Red Onion Entertainment. Go on there and like us, please. Uh, and also Twitter at Red Onion E N T E R T 1. All right, ne till next time, y'all have a great week. Thank you. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.